Howdy guys and gals, I'm Kyle Broderick. Welcome to the Social Regressive. We have the Savage 12 FV and 6.5 Creedmoor all ready to go for the big mile shoot. We have ammo, we have an action bed, we have pillar bedding, we have all kinds of other things we've done to this to get it ready for this big shoot. We want it to be precise, we want it to be reliable, and so far I think we've done a pretty darn good job. It has come out really well. Make sure you check out the full playlist especially if you want to accurize your own rifle, do a pillar bedding job and an action bedding job. Uh, we have some very concise uh, kind of steps that you can take to get that accomplished. What we're going to do before we head out though is make sure that our rifle is canted properly when we're at the shooting line. At a mile, any bit of cant that I have on the rifle is going to cause some big problems downrange. It's going to throw the bullet off to one side or the other and it's going to affect elevation as well. Uh, we want to make sure that this is as straight up and down as possible and all we need to do that, now you could go out and buy one of those levels uh, like you get from SWFA, US Optics, a number of people make them, Vortex has one and I think in general probably about the lowest you're going to pay for anything you actually want to buy is probably going to be about 30 bucks. Uh, SWFA has one for 30 bucks and that just clamps onto uh, the, the scope itself. It's like a scope ring. They have some that attach to the rail on the underside here. You can take your pick but uh, you can actually just pay kind of a few cents with one of these and a little bit of caulk like we have right here. This is some silicone caulk. I've done this on a couple of rifles already and uh, the effect has been really good. I've, I've really liked how it came out. But yeah, I'm going to put a link to this right here. You can buy a whole bag of these for about 10 bucks and that way you can go through all of the rifle scopes in your collection and maybe find a way to, to tack these on. So yeah, all we're going to do is if you have some kind of flat top ring you can attach these to that and be able to get a pretty decent level. A prerequisite to this little tutorial is that you have flat topped rings. If you have some of the rounded ones then I think you're kind of out of luck. You might be able to take a really cheap ring you have laying around, uh, maybe attach it up here, uh, you know, somewhere on the, the scope and then uh, kind of spin it around so that the uh, the bottom of it is up here. You have to kind of mill it out and pop the uh, the level on top. That kind of thing could work. But for the most part, to keep this cheap, uh, thankfully I already have some flat top rings going on right here. And the first thing I need to do is establish level. So I have this chucked up in my vise. Whatever kind of stable platform you can find, whether it's sandbags or something, just make sure that your rifle is nice and steady and that it is level relative to the rail. I couldn't fit the, uh, the, the level actually under the scope because it's so low, so I'm just using a, a steel ruler to verify that. But yes, we are nice and level, and now we can pick a ring. If cant is really, really important to me, I could just slap it uh, right on that front one in front of my, uh, kind of occluding my view of the, the turret here. But I think that I want to be able to continue to see my numbers very easily without raising my head up a whole bunch. So maybe instead I can use my left eye to check level. And I can see right off the bat that this is not level with the rail right now. Uh, the top of this is not entirely flat. So I could shim this up just a tad to bring it to level. That's probably going to be pretty difficult. I think instead what I'm going to do is back out the uh, the screws on this side and then tighten them down just a little bit on this side. So we're going to actually rotate the top of the ring just a little bit uh, to get it a little bit flatter for the, uh, the scope ring. We'll see how that works. I'm using a Weaver torque wrench. I have used this a lot on this project and I love it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to back this one out just a quarter turn Same for this one. And we'll tighten down the other side and see if that works. That was easy. 
Now I do need to verify that I have proper torque all the way around. Okay, so that turned in just a little bit. That might upset it a little bit. We'll find out. Oh yeah, perfect. All right, so this is now torqued down to the appropriate 15 pound inches. And that's gonna be all the way across those top uh, screws. Looking great. It's adhesive time. And I'm gonna be using more expensive tools right here. <laughs> uh, I wanna be able to put a very thin bead of the caulk right in here. I don't want it to actually touch the scope. It's probably not gonna mess anything up. This should peel off of all of these surfaces really easily later, but uh, just in case. I'm going to touch up the bead of caulk just to make sure that we're getting good contact on there. I can see through the, the bubble level actually that it's making solid contact, but I just wanna make sure that we have plenty of coverage. Let that dry and you're done. Thanks for watching you guys. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell because you're not going to want to miss out on the next video in this series, which is going to be that long range shoot. We are going to have a really good time out there and I'm really expecting this rifle to be able to make uh, repeated hits out at that distance. I think it's gonna be up to the task. We'll see what the weather throws our way. That's always the interesting part. How windy is Oklahoma going to be on the day of the shoot? But at least we will now have appropriate cant dialed in. Uh, we're gonna be nice and flat versus gravity. So we do have that to look forward to. Uh, thanks to everybody that has made the project possible. Thank you to patrons of the Destructive Arts that have kept the lights on, kept the cameras rolling, and helped to purchase some of the equipment that goes into these build series. We have some folks that are actually pitching in a, a 50 bucks a month. That's going to be the 338 Lapua Magnum. Uh, patrons, those are Stan and Mary, and then we have a Sportsman's Guide, those are the 338 Lapua Magnum level folks, and then we have Peter at 300 Win Mag, and if anybody else wants to chip in a buck or two a month to keep these videos coming, uh, yeah, I'll put a link to Patreon, and I hope to see you guys around. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe, there's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the Destructive Arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.